Welcome, Autumn Athletes. Larry Sorensen here, and I am sitting here in the Peak Performance Center of Greendale with the owner, operator, and Autumn Athlete that's not done yet, Frank not Calavita. Yet. Frank, thanks so much for having us here and giving us an opportunity to find out what makes you an Autumn Athlete that's not done yet. Thank you, Larry. So we're going to dig right into this. Let's go. And uh, give us your bio basics. I'll be 60 years old in October. I'm about five, eight and a half. I weigh 210 pounds on a good day. Uh, how about family? There's one of them walking past, as you can see her. That's my long-term girlfriend. I live with her and four little girls. Okay. Uh, she's got six total, so we got a handful. And uh, they keep me busy. Tell us the story of what got you on the path of health and fitness. All right. There's two paths. I'll, I'll be brief, but there, it's, it's, it's kind of fun. In my mid-30s, I was at my mom's house in Pittsburgh visiting, and Mike Tyson was fighting Evander Holyfield. And I'm on the couch eating Doritos, drinking a Budweiser, had heartburn for shoving pizza in my face probably, and the fight comes on. They weigh in Mike Tyson at 222, Evander Holyfield weighed in at 218, and I'm looking at the TV watching these chiseled masterpieces of humans. These two men have certainly reached their genetic potential, which I will refer to that phrase again later. I sat in the couch at about 240 and thought, surely they mean 322 and 318 because there's no way these gods of, of, of muscle could weigh less than me. <laughs> but they did. So I came home, went to the YMCA uh, in Brown Deer, lost, you know, 70 pounds without a 170. Didn't have any muscle really. I was doing a lot of cardio and, and lift a little bit of weights. But I was trying to stay on that path. On my 42nd birthday, a deer hit me on my Harley. I hit a telephone pole, and that ended that one. So I went right back up to about 275. And for the next six, seven years, I just, and it, it was gross. I just drank and smoked and ate too much and thought, well, I'm in my mid-40s. It's time. I'm uh, done. Yeah. <laughs> I'm done. That's what we're told. They gave me a black coffee mug and black balloons on my birthday. And, you know, over the hill, blah, blah, blah. And then, uh, you know, and I'm working late at night. 9-11 changed my life. I lost a business. Started working in clubs and, and in the bar business. And uh, that's not all that healthy either. And uh, it's a Saturday morning, February 14th, Valentine's Day. My sister from Pittsburgh is calling me. Dad's been in a horrible crash. He's in a coma. His wife was killed. If I start tearing up, I don't mean to. It's, okay. it's like it was yesterday. Sure. Um, I immediately fly down to Miami and I hang out with him. Turns out we're reading the same book. I, read, I finished the book by his bedside. He died two days later. Um, massive brain trauma. He was a national champion runner. He was an athlete. He was, a, he was the athlete of the family. I was not. Sure. And I'm going through his desk and doing the estate work and, and I see his invitation to run in the uh, Masters Olympics or Senior Olympics in Palo Alto, out in California, at the Stanford campus. So I called the Olympic Committee and I told them about his death. And he was us. You only get to go there if you're the top three athletes in your state. Yes. Anyhow, uh, they said, "Well, we'll take it under advisement." And I'll never forget. I got the phone call back from a guy named John out of New Orleans. I'm on my deck, or Dad's deck, overlooking the Biscayne Bay, smoking a Newport, drinking a rum and coke. The phone rings. Jonathan says, we think it's a great idea. We're gonna call it the honorary division for master's athletes who've passed and a family wants to step in. So I was like, you gotta be if I could say that. I was, I couldn't run across the street, let alone run a 5K. So I flew home immediately to, Pitt, uh, to Milwaukee, joined the YMCA where I met you. At about 270, lost 70 quick pounds and people started following me around. Yeah, we, I did the jump rope class up in the jump rope room. They asked me to do that boot camp class up in the jump rope room. Um, I didn't take any pay for it. I just I enjoyed helping people get better. And uh, throughout the process of the trial for the guy that hit him and the, uh, going down and back, back and forth to Miami, um, someone had once said the word, Frank, you're doing something called CrossFit. And back then, no one knew what that was. Mm -hmm. uh, I was at the ice cream stand next to my dad's house. And sure enough, there was a, I almost said it again. There, there was an ice, uh, a little store with a word CrossFit written across the front of it. And I thought, is that what that kid at the YMCA was talking about? Mm -hmm. So I went to get ice cream, came back the next day for more ice cream, because it's really good. Jackson's in Daniel Beach, little plug there for them. <laughs> uh, and I walked in and it was this little room with about 20 people in it. 
doing this crazy stuff. The music's blaring. They're all sweaty. There's a group of people off to the side using PVC pipes, learning something it looked like. And I'm just standing there watching, and then the music stopped, and they all just dropped to the ground in a pile of sweat and high fives. Turns out they were doing burpees and wall balls and uh, a thing called toes to bar, a core exercise on a pull-up rack. And I looked at the girl and I said, wow, this is really cool. Where, you know, where are they clean up? Where are the showers? She said, this is CrossFit. There's no showers. We got a hose out back. And I thought, I'm doing this. I'm doing this. And I went to one more gym down there, uh, CrossFit 305, and uh, flew home immediately. Went to Washington, D.C., got certified, cashed in my IRA and opened a gym. You really know how, that's how fast it went. Yes, I do. <laughs> it was very, very quick. That's how powerful it was. The, the athleticism I met with the people I've seen in these gyms was surpassed by nothing. Mm -hmm. There's people that have great bodies. Then there's people that are physically fit. Sure. They're, they're two different things. And we work on physical fitness, and it's, it's kind of cool. So there's that. It was one man's tragedy. Tragedy. My father's death was my reason to change my entire my entire life. So you mentioned obviously we're in your gym, and, and that during that time frame is when you cashed in your IRA and yeah. bought the gym. So, yeah. so just tell us a little bit about how that worked here and what you do here. We have very few machines. We have things called ski ergs and and, and uh, rowing ergs and some air bikes. The lack of machines, and you and I were at the same YMCA, we always saw the guy with the bag and the pen light and the pencil and the, and the, and the prop protector always working on machines. In here, you're my machine and I work on you. Mad Dog, perfect. A good two. From the 40s. A good two. That boy, Jake. Here, man, let's hold this. Someone in their 50s with a good two. We go to our 60s. With a good two. We round it off with someone in their 70s. Mr. Bob, strong bat with a good two at 135. 70 year old Bob. Mike, oh, a three. My crew. We work on keeping you working correctly, mm -hmm. not the machines. You are my machines, and I am my machine. We need to run, I got four more decades minimum. I need to keep this machine running smooth. Sure. And that's what we do here. We do that by using proper mechanics in lifting technique, running, jumping, pushing, pulling, dragging, all those things. The same things you do in life every day, you just don't realize it. You pull weeds, you push uh, garbage cans, you play with kids, you throw children in the air. I mean, it's all the stuff we do here. We just do it with weights. All right, guys, today we're going to take a quick look at the Cuban press in the warm-up. Very important. Stick or light bar, it's a high pull to the front rack, to a press, to the front rack, the high pull. We call that the scarecrow. Up to the scarecrow, rack it, press it, down to the scarecrow, and release. Well done. I, I can attest to being on the floor here in a pile of sweat because <laughs> yeah. I've been there myself. So now that we've heard about what you've done with other folks and you've inspired, trained, and helped hundreds and thousands yes. of people through this facility. Yes. Uh, we want to know a little bit more specifically about you. So uh, tell us about your surgery. Oh, I'll goodness. just leave it at that and let you talk about it. <sighs> Finding out that I was good at this and that, that I did receive the fitness gene from my father, just not the running gene. I, received, I got the other genes that just allowed me to have heart and push. And I got really good at this game of CrossFit this functional fitness thing, um, placed highly, I'm highly ranked in the planet, on the planet, which blows my mind mm -hmm. that I have people from New Zealand and, and Russia contact me and, and they're, they're watching me and they're, they're chasing me. And people like, uh, and I hope he sees it, Nitro from American Gladiators, uh, he, he watches and follows me. One day on Facebook, he made a comment on my Facebook post here at the gym 
and someone had said, Frank, you know Nitro, and Nitro wrote, his name's Dan Clark, Nitro wrote back, Nitro knows Frank. And so it's kind of funny. So anyway, I took this, this newfound stuff, strength, power, agility, balance, coordination, accuracy, and I thought I'd try a new thing called motocross <laughs> because I was strong and healthy, and the guys I ride against were way better than I was, but they weren't nearly as healthy. So I was able to rise up and be a fairly good motocross rider. Okay. Uh, I placed highly. I ranked in the nation. Uh, I got to ride at the qualifier for nationals. I wasn't that good at it, but it, yeah. the, the, these guys are really good. Yeah. And that's when some things went sideways, like my motorcycle with me on it going 50, jumped 90 feet, needed to go 91, um, <laughs> lost my shoulder, blew my shoulder out, thought it would get better, didn't. Now it's gone. Um, not done yet. <laughs> Truly not done yet. Uh, rode the same track a month later uh, and did, did okay. Then a year later, I was training some people down in Florida. I was training supercross racers in, on, in the gym, and they would train me on the track. And it rained one day. We are in a beautiful facility down in Jacksonville called the WW Ranch. I went around a corner. I put my foot down. It caught my knee, twisted it. I felt it pop and yank, went over the bike, eight miles an hour. Uh, and uh, I crawled off the track. This is a tough game, tough sport. The coach said, get out of the way. The other guys are coming. So I crawled off the track. They got my bike up. Uh, I was done, didn't know how, badly, thought it would get better, then COVID came. So I limped around with a bad knee for a long time. And I left my, all my gear down there because I used to fly back and forth and uh, couldn't have surgery. I, I couldn't even get looked at. And then it came, was time to, you know, the, then it got nice out. Was, uh, we opened the gym again Memorial Day. It was uh, Murph, we had this crazy workout. And so I ran down, flew down to Florida, got my gear, came back up, did the summer, right, with a bum knee, wore my knee sleeve, and started playing tennis. You know, I, I couldn't ride as much as I wanted to. I wasn't good at that. I was a good tennis player as a child, so we joined a pool over here. Turns out I'm still good at tennis. And so that grinded my knee down. I finally got to see a doctor, and they said, yeah, you, uh, you've destroyed your knee, we need to replace it. I said, not doing that. We're not doing that yet. Uh, I guess another NDY, not doing that yet. <laughs> and uh, they did some work on it. I had a, la a root tear of the lateral meniscus. It was, uh, I needed to, be, to not move my leg for almost 10 weeks, uh, which is very hard. Look around what I do. Uh, and it's, it took two years to heal. In that time frame, I kept on riding. One more crash, other shoulder went out. Uh, I'm not that good at it. I mean, it was a lot of fun and a lot of energy. Yeah. And uh, that one I had to get fixed. I had to get looked at. And she said, your shoulder's done. I need to replace them both. And she said, from that point forward, you will be really good at sipping tea. And that's it. Yeah. You'll do this, and that's the end of it. And I said, well, then we're not doing that. Not happening. So she put it back together the best she could. And I thought some of my aches and pains were just from riding and things, and I'm playing tennis, and... One day I'm serving and my hands went numb and my racket flew out of my hands. I almost killed a guy. I broke the $300 racket. Not a good day. <laughs> my girl said, finally, you need to go see somebody about what's going on because my hands are numb. I got these vibrations going throughout my body. My legs are always swollen. Turns out I have a dent in my spinal cord, probably from landing on my face all those times on the track. Sure. And that I needed surgery today. He said, you're about to lose use of your arms, legs, urinary control, bowel control, sexual function. I mean, it, it, my life was about to just crumble in front of me. If there was one more hit in that cord, one more nerve goes, because they, they don't know which one it is, it's just a bundle of nerves just traveling down your spine that go because there's pressure on them. They don't come back. Yeah. So we signed up. I checked with four different guys, four different surgeons, spinal surgery, emergency, uh, December, uh, excuse me, November 30th of, this, of last year. So I'm now six months out, five months out. Um, and just started retraining for the World Championships again. My surgeon said, you'll never lift again. I said, yes, I will. Uh, not done yet, Larry. I, 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 not the prettiest guy in the world, but I could be your poster child for not done yet. <laughs> I got a lot of body parts that don't work, but I'm still better than most ever will be. Mm -hmm. uh, because I try hard and I, you, know, you work at it and you, you, know, you try to train yourself and re rehab yourself and take care of yourself. 
which is the same thing I do for everybody here. Right. Keep them healthy. Try to keep them healthy, right. and because they're not done either. But so, anyway, that's a long story, but it's it's true. No, but it, it's a good story. So. Tell us a little bit about what your training regimen is now, your diet now, all leading up to what you're chasing after for a goal currently. Okay. I had qualified for the world championships in Masters Weightlifting, which is clean and jerk and snatch. Um, massive, beautiful, amazing movements of the of human body. To watch what the pros can do is mind-numbing. It's, mm-hmm. it's to, to think that that's even possible. By males and females, of all sizes, it's crazy. So yeah, I, I love it, and um, I qualified, and I was going to go until all these things happened, mm-hmm. and I was still going to go until this neck thing happened, and I missed it. It happened to be in Orlando this year, so I, mm-hmm. I would have been, it would have been an easy ride. It was one in Japan as well. There's two different uh, uh, sanction, uh, sanctions, and uh, you know, my doctor again said, Yo, you'll never do it again. He goes, you'll be lucky to get to 90% of what you used to have. I said, I'll take 90. <laughs> yeah. My 90 is good enough. Yeah. Um, and it won't be because I'll get back to better than I was because I'm still better today than I was 10 years ago by moving better, mm-hmm. moving patterns. So now I work on, Larry, I work on mobility. I work on from my ankles up into my, what's left of my neck uh, for about 35 to 45 minutes a day, which is not a lot. Mm-hmm. If I had more time, I would. I don't have time. Some people that are really good at this take hours a day. I, I don't have that. Mm-hmm. I'm still raising four kids. My girlfriend has, we, we've got lives. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I started lifting again. I haven't lifted for a long time. I, I, just a minute ago, I had uh, you know, 225 over my head for the first time in, in many, many, many months. Mm-hmm. And it felt pretty good. Sure. Yeah. I mean, I feel things, uh, but it felt pretty good. So I will uh, lift weights three, four days a week, 45-minute sessions, nothing too crazy. I will mobilize my body every day, as I do with clients and, and members. They're not really clients. They're my athletes, my friends, my, yeah. my people. Uh, I do it with them. I show them. I teach them. Uh, we do yoga here on Wednesdays. I try to get in yoga classes, which is, I know I, when I taught at the YMCA, I used to call it napping class. <laughs> I was wrong. Yeah. Yoga is way more intense than I thought it was. Yep. Uh, I've learned that, you know, just being strong isn't the answer. Uh, that's what got me in trouble on the, on the dirt bike. I thought yes. strong was good. Strong is not good. Yeah. Um, powerful is good. Strong, yeah. eh. Yeah. So, uh, we learn to be more stable, more balanced, more powerful. Strength comes through that. Yeah. So I've learned, I'm, I'm still learning. I learn every day. So speaking of strength, just to give folks an idea of, of your abilities that you did attain, give us some of your PRs. Well, my biggest deadlift is a 552, 552 pounds at a 200 pound body weight. Uh, squat, 450. Uh, I can clean and jerk, well, a year ago, <laughs> it was a lot more than now. I, I was going 275, sure. 275 sure. pounds, um, a snatch, maybe 205, um, mm-hmm. which is pretty good for guys my yeah. age, yeah. Uh, any age for that matter. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, bench presses, you know, again, without two shoulders, yeah. uh, I can still knock out a 315, sure. but I can't rep them anymore. Um, those are the big three. Right. Uh, yeah, it's... The PRs happen in movement patterns as well. You know, right. If you just move better, right. if you can get your shoulders back in the right position, one more right. millimeter, that's right. a PR as I get those two. Right. Uh, it's not just numbers. Well, and that mobility comes in because of all those numbers, and, and I get the fortunate ability to, to deal with a lot of athletes, um, to me, the 200-pound snatch is probably the most impressive just to me because of the Fair enough. Yeah, it's, everything yeah. it takes and yeah. all the body motion, the mobility, the balance and everything it's crazy. to get 200 pounds over your head. I know lots of guys in squat 400. Yeah. yeah, you yeah. Know, not to say that's not a big deal. Oh, it's huge deal. I can't yeah. do that, yeah. but that, that's, that's a big deal. But uh, to put all that other stuff together to get that bar uh, over snatch. your yeah. head like that, yeah. to me personally, in a quarter is of a second, incredible feat. It takes so, a quarter of a second yeah. from ground it's, to overhead in no time. It's, it's, it's magnificent. It's, yeah. it's a, that's a so pretty one. Now you got me more fired than ever. I, <laughs> I want to get back on the stage one more time. Yeah. See what I can do one more time against the world's best. Yeah. You know, we used to kind of play pool with guys at a bar or something or play a game of darts with some drunk guy for, you know, and now I'm talking about the best athletes on the planet. Yeah. It's, uh, it's definitely a I lifestyle wanna, change. I want to go. That's yeah, for I wanna, sure. Yeah, yeah I want to go. All right. So we're going to hit a quick little lightning round, a few right. questions here. Um, Tell us what is your favorite exercise? Power clean. How about uh, give us your favorite cheat meal and or dessert? Pizza, french fries, and ice cream. What would you have done differently 
in regarding your health and fitness? Started decades ago. How about telling us your secret sauce to health and fitness? Living it, being part of it. I, there's a, a phrase out there that people that can't teach. Mm -hmm. Well, I can and I teach. Mm -hmm. And I do believe that lead by example. Um, okay. I wouldn't ask you to do something I wouldn't do or try. Um, and I would never lead someone astray. I, mm -hmm. Try this, it's you know, a double backflip. No, I, we, we, I wait till you're ready. So live by example and uh, live truthfully. How about, since you do what you do, can you give us uh, what would be your number one piece of advice for folks out there that whether they're beginning a, a training exercise or thinking about it, or maybe they're already started, but uh, perhaps not getting the results they want. Okay. I don't know. I'll leave well, it to you. I'm going to look at the camera for this one. Yep. I'm, I'm going to talk to whoever's watching this. Get off your couch and start. Find a coach. Somehow, some way, find a gym with a good aura. Check it out and stay and learn to be uncomfortable. Just become comfortable with being uncomfortable. That's, I, I don't know what to say. Oh, well, that's a great phrase. It, I love it. It, it, yeah. it. It's not easy, but it's worth it. Absolutely. Yeah. So, Frank, I've enjoyed this. I, I know our audience has enjoyed it. It's been so. a lot of fun. Uh, I'm just going to kind of leave it to you for any final thoughts that you'd like to give to our audience. Gosh, based on what this is, you know, my uh, idea of what the autumn athlete is, I, I truly am that. Um, you know, the color of the hair changed like the color of the leaves changed in autumn, but it's, it, we're not done. We have decades to go. Uh, no matter, even if you're in your teens, 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, I don't care. Get off the couch and give it a try. Play new games, try new sports, try weightlifting. Don't be afraid of it. Find a coach, find a gym, and do it. That says it all. <laughs> there you have it, folks. Frank Calavita, definitely an autumn athlete that's not done yet. Not done. Thanks a bunch for tuning in. Remember to like, subscribe, and ding that bell for notifications, and we will see you next time. Thank you, Larry. I appreciate it.